Oh my goodness! Yay! Yay. <laughs> Here we are again. Welcome to Hillsong Sisterhood this morning, girls. I hope here in Sydney, at least, you got outside, out of the house. When I opened the curtains this morning, it was very early in the morning, but there was lightning, there was thunder, there was torrential rain. And I thought, oh Jesus, please let the girls get in the room and get to school drop off and not look yes. like they've been attacked by a flock of seagulls <laughs> uh, when they get there. So well done if you have got into one of the rooms this morning and welcome to everybody who has joined us online. My name is Carolee Fielding and I'm here with my co-host, Laura. <laughs> co-host. <laughs> yeah, I know. Your mom called us co-host, so I thought I like I'm going to take it. Yeah. And um, you're like, you're just so well, we're, we're so glad you made it. We're yeah. so glad you're here. You're so welcome here at Sisterhood. Um, yeah, for the next few weeks, we're going to be taking this table and uh, talking about certain things. But now, let me just quickly introduce you to Laura, who needs no introduction. But if you're joining us for the first time, um, you probably know lots about Laura Tognavalu. She is uh, the global youth pastor for Hillsong Church. Um, she's obviously grown up in this church her whole life. But one thing you might not know about Laura that I was thinking this morning that I might tell you is a number of weeks ago, we went just to a friend's house quite late at night right. um, for <laughs> a little bit of, uh, for just a fun night out with some girls. Yeah. They live on the ocean and they have um, like a dock that goes out in the ocean. And we were just having a good time. And we were down there probably 10.30, 11 o'clock at night and someone suggested that we should go for a swim yeah. oh, and um yes Shekinah and it was dark and it was the ocean in Australia which to me like the the Jaws soundtrack just plays in my <laughs> mind every time we do something like that Laura first one in, in yes. all her clothes in all her clothes all my clothes yeah. in the ocean 10 30 at night it was a, that was a really good moment for me in fairness I got in quite quickly after you because I'm competitive, so I didn't want to be left behind. <laughs> I was like, I'm going in too. But I tell you what, I got out so quickly. You yes. had no idea. Like in, out. I was yes. like, I'm sure there was something underneath. Yeah. Well, the yeah. thing about it as well is there was a strong current. <laughs> so we had to get out quick because otherwise we were going to go out to don't, sea. <laughs> don't do what we do. Don't. Yes. This is not a, this is a disclaimer. Don't do things like that. I don't know. I came home and told my husband, he's like, you did what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. Um, but anyway, Laura, do you want to say hello to the girls? Yes. Hello. Hello, girls. Um, it is so lovely uh, to be gathered uh, today. And I think we've got some really beautiful things planned over the, over the next few weeks. And, um, I just want to let you know that mum and dad, Brian and Bobby, um, have arrived uh, in the USA. They got there smoothly. And I think I have a photo to show you oh, of them uh, reuniting with their their sons and their grandchildren, um, which was a beautiful, beautiful reunion, of course, because it's been months and months and months and months that we haven't seen them. And I haven't seen them, but that's okay. Um, so, so all is going well for them. And we're just so glad that they are there um, doing what they need to do in the USA. And, um, and mum FaceTimed us this morning, she actually, yeah. of course. And so I'm sure that she's watching right now. So make sure you put in the chat, uh, hi, hi to, <laughs> hi to Roberta Lee, Bobby. We love you. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a beautiful morning. It's gonna be a beautiful morning. Do you mm. wanna pray? I would love to pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much um, for your goodness and your grace, grace and your faithfulness to us. And I just pray for uh, this conversation today around this table, this table of friendship, Lord Jesus, that you would bless it, that you would anoint it, that your plans and your, your purposes uh, will, will reach uh, and, and uh, go into the innermost being, our innermost being, the depths of our hearts and our spirits. We love you, Lord, and we want to we wanna glorify you this morning. Yes, okay. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. 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 Thank you. So this morning, Laura has beautifully, graciously deferred to me to take um, a bit of a lead this morning. And um, and so let me first, before we go any further, introduce you to um, the other women that are joining us at the table. And I'm really, really excited actually this morning that they agreed to join with Laura and I. Um, this woman here, many of you will recognize Shekinah is one of the creative pastors here oh. at um, Hillsong Church. Uh, she's uh, behind that megawatt smile of her. 
Rogers is actually a very fierce, yes. uh, loyal friend. Uh, she is a woman who, um, she's a worshiper yeah. at heart. Uh, she loves other people and uh, uh, sacrifices a lot um, for other people. She, um, she, you've got a sense of justice about you, Shekinah, that I think radiates from you. And actually the topic that we are talking about this morning, you embody so well. And so I'm looking forward to the girls hearing from you. But thank you for being here. Thank you. That was, that was very kind words. I said, you are <laughs> I'm going to try woman. to keep up to the expectation of what you've just said. <laughs> Do you know what I love about Shekinah? Tell me. Is tell that oh you, gosh, here we no. go. Oh, here, keeps going. <laughs> I just love that you, I was just saying this, uh, but you light up every single room. And I'm not, I think I said that when it was your birthday um, a few couple of months ago, but you just have so much life and buoyancy about you. It's like the, the air gets lighter when you oh, walk yeah. in. And I just think you are a boss, like what you do, you just, <laughs> you command in the best possible way, uh, the atmosphere around you. And we just appreciate everything that you Absolutely. do. We're grateful for you. Thank you, my Good friend. Woman. Yeah. Good woman. <laughs> and this woman to my left here, um, many of you will not recognize. And I love that she came with me this morning. I picked her up this morning. We've had a few moments of nerves. <laughs> um, this is Rachel Dale. Mm. Rachel is a dear friend of mine. She is uh, the wife of the senior pastor of Church by the Bridge. Uh, church by the Bridge is the Anglican church in the local parish where Ben and I actually live. Uh, mm. They actually have multiple campuses. Um, but I want to tell you a quick story about Rachel. Um, in fact, it was a number of years ago, eight years ago, and I had just had my first baby. Um, my family lives overseas, for those of you that don't know. And uh, my two best friends, Jill McClory and Brooke Lidgerwood, I'm talking about you, had recently <laughs> left me and moved overseas um, just after I had a baby. And so, um, I was, I'm married to a man who travels for work. He was overseas ministering a lot of the time. And I found myself in a real state, um, a little bit lonely, a little bit unsure. I had a baby who was genuinely nocturnal. He slept in the day and not at night. And um, so I would often walk the pram around our um, suburb and just walk in circles and look for coffee shops and um, basically, you know, kind of wander to myself. There's probably a few tears in, in that time. Um, and I remember walking past this church regularly in our neighborhood. And, um, and there was always um, gatherings, like often women in the courtyard. And I was like, they're having a play date. There was even an advertisement for kind of a play date, um, a gathering of girls, bring your kids, have coffee. And I thought, you know, one of the days that I was walking, I thought, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna meet some women in my suburb, in my neighborhood. And, um, and I walked down and sure enough, there was women at the front and I walked in and um, this, beautiful lady approached me and she said, hello. She's like, I'm Rachel. She says, are you here for the women's Bible study? And I thought, oh, heck no. <laughs> I thought to myself, not that I didn't want to study the Bible, but I barely could get up in the morning. Like, and I couldn't read and like, I thought oh, I'm not going to add anything to this. And I thought, oh, but I was actually desperate at the time for a connection, uh, like just local connection, you know, without having to put the kid in the car and drive, you know, I obviously came to church and had all my girlfriends, but it was just that, that need. And, um, and believe it or not, I joined that Bible study. Yeah. I did. And Rachel was leading it. And she not only, um, embraced me and loved me. And I don't even think she knew how much I needed her in that season, but she invited me to dinners and, um, her family got to know mine. She has four boys. Uh, um, she is uh, a dynamic person. Uh, um, when I asked you to be here this week, which I only asked her about 24, 48 hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's mean, isn't it? She said, oh, uh, ooh, she's like, oh, I'm so honored that you would ask me. She's like, but can I pray about it? And I was like, you know what? That is, if that doesn't tell you about the kind of woman she is, I regularly get texts from, from her. Ben um, gets texts from her husband, Paul, just letting us know they're praying for us. Okay. Um, they're upholding us. Um, they have been good friends to us. Their children are good friends of our children. I am so grateful that you join us this morning. I'm excited for the women to hear from you. So do you want to say a quick hello? Uh, hello. Thank you very much for having me. I feel very honoured and slightly terrified. <laughs> it's okay. It's thank okay you. to feel terrified. They're all going to be cheering. I know them. There's just imagine all the women in the room just clapping, <laughs> cheering, saying, yeah. welcome. You're so welcome here. But um, the reason I was excited, girls, um, that both Rachel and Shekinah agreed to join Laura and I on the sisterhood table is because when Bobby put out the challenge, uh, she said to us, hey, Laura, Carolee, Cass, who's taking the table, what matters most 
most to me is blank. And she said, fill in the blank. Mm. And as I prayed about that statement, the word community came immediately to mind. What matters to me is community. And uh, what's funny about the last time that I sat around this table um, as a host, I exhorted you girls from the book of Hebrews to build a longer table. I don't know if you remember that, but Hebrews 13 says, let's go outside where Jesus is, where the action is. And I encourage you to have eyes open for the hurting and for the hungry and for those who do not yet know the saving grace of Jesus. But so when the word community came to mind, I thought, Lord, that can't be right. I've already shared on that. And, uh, and yet this week, God impressed upon my heart to speak to you about those closest to you, mm. your community of faith, your sisters, your brothers, your fellow believers, your community. In a time of tension around the globe, you know, people are really hurting at the yeah. moment. Entire nations are under stress and strain. And one of the things that breaks my heart the most is squabbling and hurt and tension within the church. Mm. You know, people are leaving their faith. They're deconstructing what is most dear to them because they cannot reconcile with the people, mm. the imperfect people that make up the community in which they are a part of. And so as I was thinking about this morning and what it could be, I came across this scripture in Galatians that really grabbed my attention. And, and if, you, if you read your Bible, the book of Galatians was a letter written to the church. It was written to us, to believers. And it lays out these boundaries and these promises and these requirements for righteous living. And then right towards the end of this book of the Bible, chapter six, there's, there's a subheading in my Bible and it says, doing good to all, doing good to all. And uh, so this is the passage I wanna look at and talk about today. So if you have your Bibles in the room or you're online watching, um, why don't you open your Bible with me today? Chapter six, verse one to 10 reads like this. It says, brothers, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently, but watch yourself for you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. One other translation says, bear one another's burdens. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. And the one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Now listen to this. Let us not become weary in doing good for at a proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, listen to this. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers community, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Look around you girls, look around if you're in one of our rooms in Brisbane, in Melbourne, in the city campus, hello to the city. You know, look around. If you're watching, you're visiting online, I want you to picture in your mind thousands of women, not just the women here at Hillsong Church or the women at Church by the Bridge, but the women all over the world who share your faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your community. And I feel like Pastor Bobby has been saying this for decades now, but if, if the women can't get a revelation, if the women can get a revelation of the responsibility to love and carry and admonish and bear the burdens of one another in Christian community, then I actually believe the church will find a unity and a peace that makes this community irresistible yeah. to others. Yeah. It's a sisterhood, right? We know that. But in the church community, I just want to say to you this morning, we're a lot more than a song and a sermon. Mm. And, I, and as I thought about this, I wondered, well, what makes this community though different to other communities? Because in all honesty, I think if some of you would agree, but maybe your work colleagues or school moms or footy friends um, could maybe sometimes show kindness and bear your burdens better than some of your Christian friends. And yet, you know, the only thing, the one thing that sets Christianity apart from any other religion or community from your local coffee club, your netball team, your bingo gathering, whatever it is that you do, is Jesus. Yep. And uh, last night I was saying to Laura, I woke up at, at 2 a.m. with this thought and it was this, we serve a communal God. Mm. In fact, our God, different than any other person, that, you know, other that claims God, deity, our God, the one true God is three in one. He's actually a community in of himself. And uh, you know, 
He's distinguishable, but indivisible. He's one God, three persons. He's singular in character and nature, but he's actually plural in person. So you ask me, how important is community to God? God is a community. Uh, yeah. and, and what does God ask us to do? But he asks us to reflect his image. So don't tell me we're not designed for community. We're intended for godly relationship. And so my question for you today and the question we're gonna reflect around this table is are we reflecting Jesus in our church community? Actually, more importantly, are we accurately reflecting Jesus in our church community? (laughs) In fact, I wanna propose to you that if we are ultimately gonna fulfill that which Jesus has called us to do, reflect His nature, reflect the Godhead, then we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. And so what does that look like? Well, I believe and it's my conviction that it means going to church, finding Christian community, going to church when it's hard, going to church when it's inconvenient, leaning into Christian community, even when, even when, listen to me, Christian community or someone within it has let you down. Mm -hmm. And we will, we will. But it means being more gracious and merciful to one another. It means listening and leaning in and bearing burdens. We're gonna talk about that. We are not simply connected to each other because we have similar moral codes of contact. We're in, we're in community to be a reflection of Christ to one another and alongside one another. So are we being, are you being Christ-like and Christ-centered in the way you speak about, act within and serve your faith community? Mm. I don't know, maybe somebody under the sound of my voice today, you've been a bit isolated. Maybe somebody online here, you've been a bit resistant to community and to fellowship and for good reason. And I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but I just wanna reiterate to you, let us not become weary in doing good for the proper time will reap a harvest if we don't give up. So therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those in the family of believers. Uh, So I wonder, girls, if the Holy Spirit isn't prompting people even now, are you finding unity and communion with one another? I'm not saying we shouldn't find ourselves devoted to other communities, but it's to ensure that this community, this one that you're a part of is united around Christ. And then maybe the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you about that invest, your investment into this place. This particular place, maybe you're watching from another church, maybe your church community. Maybe God's speaking to you, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you about putting down roots or putting more time into building godly community. It's so important. Yeah. What did you think when you were reading this passage? Uh, well, I just think, this has been the story of my life. Yeah. I've, I've grown up in church. It's been, um, for me, a, a beautiful, a beautiful story. And um, I've loved, um, I've loved all the generations. I've loved the mothers and the father figures and the sisters and the brothers and the friends and, yeah. uh, you know, the, the different stages of life and so on. And, um, and I, Obviously, I'm aware um, that um, at times it's felt very natural, um, very like lovely, <laughs> easy, um, beautiful, like all of those things. And then at other times it's felt like tension. Yeah. Um, it's it's felt disappointing. Um, it's felt uncomfortable, unnatural. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that is community. Yeah. That is community and that is doing life with one another. Yeah. And um and I love I love that we would talk about this today, Carolee. And I think over the last six months all of those things have been heightened. Yeah. Uh, for right. everyone and for and for me, especially in church community. Um in church community. And I actually I wrote something down um let me just uh, unlock my phone. <laughs> <In the face. laughs> um, but I, I read I read this this portion of scripture in a few different translations, and I love how it says it in uh, in the Passion in Galatians uh, six verse one. It says, "My beloved friends, if you see a believer who is who is overtaken with a fault, may the one who overflows with the Spirit seek to restore him, um, win him over with gentle words." which will open his heart to you and will keep you from exalting yourself over him. Love empowers us. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's um, troubles. And so what I like to do uh, with scripture is to pull it apart and to uh, like work out how, how does this apply to me? Where do I sit within this? And so I just asked myself a few questions. Like, um, do I overflow with the spirit? Like, do I overflow with the Spirit? Um, 
And, and, and because of that, do I seek to restore? I'm not going to lie to you. There have been moments uh, over the last few months where, um, you know, if somebody has spoken out and it's, um, you know, it's, it's hurt, it's been, it's been painful. Or if someone has, uh, you know, misunderstood, uh, misunderstood, like I felt misunderstood or our family has felt misunderstood or, uh, you know, the very um, heart and intention of our church has has been misinterpreted and, and misunderstood by others. I've wanted to, you know, Kick them out. Yeah, no, I, I, I haven't wanted to kick them out, but I've wanted kidding. to. I've wanted to. I have wanted to pick up the phone yeah. and call up people and defend and yeah. and justify and do all of those things. Um, and I have had to ask the Lord, like Jesus, like what would you do, and what would you want me to do? And um, and I keep coming back to gentleness. Beautiful. I keep coming back to. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I keep coming back to representing Jesus. I'm sorry. It, you know what? We've gotten this far without tears for me. <laughs> it's been many weeks. But um, representing Christ, the Christ-like nature. And, um, and so I love that here it says, um, it says with gentle words. Gentle words, open hearts. Beautiful. And so my question for myself is, is this, are my words gentle? Yeah. Are my ways gentle? And are my, are my ways uh, redemptive? And do they build bridges? Yeah. And there have been definitely uh, moments where um, what I have wanted to do, um, I have surrendered and submitted to the Lord. Yeah. And in that process, my want, my desire has changed. Beautiful. And, and in turn, what I have wanted to do is to write a, a text message saying, hi. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Like, like, thank you for giving me that perspective. Um, your story is valid, and I wish I wish you the best. And I pray blessings over you. And that's been uh, both a difficult and beautiful, like humbling process beautiful. for me. Um, am I empowered by love? Yeah. You know, not by uh, frustration not by impatience, like what empowers me uh, yeah. to be a part of this community and to be a part of the answer? Is it love? Yeah. Is it lo- love from the Lord? And, um, and how, can I ca- how can I carry the troubles of others? Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> like how do we carry one another's burdens? Yeah. Um, and not just with prayer, yeah. but with doing life with one another. And I think that takes a lot of a lot of wisdom and grace. And so, um, so I love this because I think it's the very reality of of what we are living as a Christian community, as the church. Absolutely. And mm. you know, when I was thinking about you, Shekinah, um, you know, you are a proudly Black, Hispanic, Southern woman. Uh, your culture is important to you. Anybody that's close to you would know that. When uh, Shekinah came over to my house for dinner recently, oh, yeah. she brought with her a sweet potato pie. <laughs> and <laughs> don't <laughs> knock it until you try it because you. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, it's not only it. very good, it is, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is phenomenal. But that is a recipe you got from your grandmother. Yeah. And one of my favorite that's stories beautiful. is the fact that she gave you the little recipe and then said, to, said no, should have been make about 20 pies and you're like 20 pies what am I gonna do but that's how you live Shekinah you live arms wide open yeah anybody's invited to your table but you came to Australia a number of years ago as a very young girl you're still a young girl you're not you're a woman but you're yes you, I'll take yes okay <laughs> anyways <laughs> but um yeah and you came probably fairly alone didn't really know many people and yet you I mean I don't know of many nights where you don't have people around your table you have built um Christian community and this year in particular, my friend, you have built community in a year where there has been hardship and tension. Uh, Even as I was speaking to you, like uh, um, even around your culture and over who you are and what you represent. Uh, and, And yet you haven't leaned out, you've leaned in. Has that been a hard thing to do? Um, uh, yes and no. Yeah. Um, no, because of the fact that, um, I'm a, like I'm a church girl through yeah, and through. Come on. <laughs> like even when you reference like of going, this is the verse. My first response was like, oh, I know a song for that. Yeah. Like, there's nothing more Christian than going, oh, I've got a song for that verse. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, so it wasn't hard necessarily to lean out because the church has always been a safe place for Beautiful. me. Beautiful. Um, throughout whatever was going on, whatever was chaotic and wild, the church has always been that place. But I guess this past year, it's it's um. The reason why it's a yes if it's been hard is it's sometimes we have found within the church it hasn't been as safe yeah. for um, someone like me or a lot of different people. And so it has been a more difficult year of being someone that's black and a female and right. in the church. And that's just the reality of what it was. But um, if you don't lean into Jesus, like, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. he's all I've got. Yeah. And so if yeah. he can't give me the wisdom on how to walk through this, yeah. like, I'm not going to get it anywhere else. So it was kind of, for me, it was, you have two options. You can lean in yeah. and it might be painful, but you are going to get to where you need to get to. Yeah. Or you can lean out and actually nothing's going to be solved. Wow. And I'm a problem solver. So yeah. I'm going to go, what's going to solve my problem? <laughs> Leaning into Jesus. Great. So then Holy Spirit. Okay. Give me the wisdom that I need to keep leaning in. Give me the wisdom that I need to actually comfort those who are hurting just like myself. Beautiful. But there's an expectation to still lead them. Yeah. So give me the words and how do I do it and how do I educate and how do I bring people along on the journey? And it's just bring people in. And when you have leaned in, check, have you found a reflection of Jesus back in your community? And how, what do, you, what do you see when you gather people around your table? Oh, I see joy yeah. and I see kindness and I see faithfulness. And those are all Come His on. attributes. Beautiful. Like that is who He is. Yeah. And I find comfort and I find understanding. And it's just by opening my table and going, okay, like let's chat. Or it's having a coffee yeah. with someone and going, Let's wrestle through this. Because actually wrestling is okay. Yeah, you were allowed on. to wrestle with yeah. God. He, that doesn't scare him. Yeah. And I think sometimes we think that that's not allowed. Yeah. Um, and so it's been actually telling people of going, hey, no, 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 it's okay to wrestle because at least you're still with him. Yeah. Like he's still, like let him have control of that. Yeah. And so we've just done that. We've done chats and we've done life and we've done community and where people are confused, I go, well, come and come over <laughs> and let's have some fun. <laughs> and let's take a breather. And yeah, it's really chaotic out there, but there are still good things that are yeah. happening and God is still on the yeah. throne and He still will make a way. And it's reminding of, reminding us of His truths mm. and what He's doing. So mm. Totally. Rach, um, you know, when we talk about this idea of bearing one another's burdens, I wondered if you would share with the girls, I know it's a bit vulnerable for you, but I know your story and your story is one of you grew, you grew up in the church, you've loved Jesus a long time, but that did not stop you from walking through uh, a very difficult season. Would you yeah. be happy to share with the yeah, girls? Sure. I'd be very happy to share. Um, I've walked through a few difficult seasons, but probably the most difficult was um, 16 years ago. Um, I was pregnant with my first child, my first son, because I have four of them. <laughs> I am pregnant with my first son and um, literally two days before I was, I, I was due to give birth, um, we found out that my husband was very ill. Mm -hmm. um, so that was clearly a shock and quite traumatic. But I thought that, we both thought that everything would be okay and that he would be healed. But after six months, um, sadly, he wasn't healed and he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, I was very young, I was only 27, and I walked out of that hospital room and my whole identity had changed. I was mm -hmm. suddenly a widow and a single mum. Yeah. And in that absolute moment of despair, I had a choice to make. I had a choice right then to make where I could run to Jesus or I could run away from Jesus. Yeah. And by the grace of God, um, and His grace alone, I ran to Jesus. Um, and, and, you know, God promises in the Bible to never leave nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. And He hasn't. He has never left me. He has carried me through that. And one of the ways that He has carried me through that is through the church and through my sisters in Christ and through godly men in the church who carried me through this yeah. and loved me and cared for me. And, yeah, I think. What, in that uh, in that season in particular, 27, you're a widow, you're yeah. a single mother. Mm. Um, how did the church practically, what a practical, if there's, if there's women watching yeah. and they're like, I am lost, I am going through a really difficult time, it's hard for me to even get to church, let alone, what, what are the practical ways that we, the church, can help? And what are practical ways that that, that person can lean into? Yeah, yeah. Community? I think, um, First of all, you need to be really vulnerable and able to tell people that it's hard. I think when you go through a traumatic event like I did, people know about it and they're very good initially to really kind of 
get in there and help you and, and cook meals and all that sort of stuff. But it's actually more the three months, the six months, the 12 months down the track where it becomes really hard because reality sinks in and it's just a hard slog. And I think there's kind of, yeah, the first thing that people can do is pray for you. And I know that sounds so kind of cliche, but I mean, intentionally pray for you. So it's easy to say to someone, oh, I'll pray for you, but actually be intentional about it. And and if you're struggling, you need to actually ask people to pray for you. And you yeah. need that community to be able to, to, to be able to ask, yeah. Um, I think the second one is to be present. So, you know, there's actually, I didn't realise this until recently, there's actually 79 unique one another verses in the Bible. So there's bear one another's burdens, there's um, serve one another, love one another, rejoice with one another, weep with one another, wow. mourn with one another. There's 79 unique ones and some of them are obviously repeated. But, you know, we are meant to be a community. Yeah. We are meant to be there for each other. Yeah. And that can feel overwhelming. As we've said, you can feel overwhelmed by that and, and burdened by that. And I think, but we still need to walk with people. Absolutely. Um, you know, I pray every morning that the Spirit will fill me and show me mm-hmm. who to reach out to, who to love, um, yeah, who to walk with. And it's not that you're going to be at someone's beck and call 24-7, yeah. but you're just going to, you send them texts, you you check, check up on them if they haven't been to church for a little while or that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think the last one is um, just keep pointing them to Jesus, as we yeah. said, because we will fail, fail people. I have failed people. Totally. Our churches will fail people, but the only person that will never fail us is Jesus. Yeah. So keep pointing people to Him. And, you know, the way you do that is with, again, through Scripture, through prayer. And I have a few favourite verses that I always, you know, that I send out to people. Like I love James uh, chapter four, verse eight, which is come near to God and he will come near to you. So you just send that to someone or Psalm 62 or um, Psalm 121, lift your eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? That kind of thing. So yeah, I think just prayer, presence and just keep pointing them to Jesus. Amen. I mean, um, Laura, if there were, I know one of the things that when we talk about church, Mm -hmm. especially in this day and age, in fact, your mum posted about, this, you know, yesterday on her Instagram, she said, um, we're having a sisterhood table. Um, and I noticed a number of the comments, there was women who saying, thank you so much. This has been a lifeline for me. I live in country South wow. Australia, or I live, you know, here in a, or our church isn't gathering and stuff like that. So I recognize that there are circumstances where women cannot, um, you know, gather physically in rooms or in a church. But what would you say to the um, to the person watching, the woman watching, who maybe has just resisted that a little bit, who can, but actually um, is just like resisting yeah. joining that, you know, going to church, really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's a difficult one because I feel like everyone's circumstances are so different and so unique. And I think uh, like I can understand how, you know, whether it's geographically or, you know, how you, what the condition of your heart is or what your story is, how uh, it could look very different for everybody. Um, But I just, I just go back to the word of the Lord and I go back to how, like what you, what you began with, like, like God in himself, like exemplified community, uh, that's why he uh, he created the church. Yeah, totally. That's why he created. Like that, that was the kindness of God, yeah. you know. And I think his his intention for the church is is it would be a beautiful story. Yeah. And so I think that we have a part to play, you know. Like mm-hmm. that sometimes we can wait and we can uh, wait for for that to, to just kind of like knock on our door and arrive in our lives. Yeah. Um, but. Pete actually did a really beautiful sermon. My husband, for anybody who uh, doesn't know who Pete is, um, he did a really beautiful message a few Sunday nights ago about community. Um, it's, it was called Shoulder to Shoulder. And um, he spoke from Hebrews where it says, let us consider um, how to spur one another on. Yeah. Um, and um, as he studied that and went and deeper into that, it, what it actually means is like, let us like deeply contemplate Mm. how we can be a blessing unto others. Mm. And so I just think the onus is on us yeah. to, to actually think and consider, like, how can I create community? Yeah. How can I make community? Um, and, and in doing that, um, you are deeply considering, you know, contemplating 
in your neighbourhoods, on your streets, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you walk around with a newborn baby and you come across <laughs> a church and a, and a women's Bible yeah. study <laughs> and you walk into that and yeah. and in turn, like there is a there is a community of women who are a blessing into yeah. your life and, and your season of life. And um, and how can I do that for somebody and for others and for, for my street and my neighbourhood or at my you know, kids school or in, in my church. And, and so I think, um, I think that God in His kindness, it, like He does, um, He does that for us. He does. Um, he does. And then also I think by His Spirit prompts us mm. also mm. to be part of the answer yeah. and to be part of creating that community. Yeah. And so I would say to women who perhaps you know, wherever they are is, um, is, is actually open your eyes to what God has actually entrusted uh, within your sphere. Um, because I do believe that it does exist mm -hmm. uh, for you. Um, but also like, how can you be part of the answer? How can you, how can you deeply, you know, contemplate and consider how you can spur others on and be a blessing to them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For you, Shek, I know one of the things, I, and I've said it, this has just been repetitive, but uh, gathering people around a table is kind of your love language. And as I was thinking about that last night, I thought, well, I mean, that's, that is the hallmark of Christian community. We break bread together. We um, share a cup together. But that's actually, like, so communion is community in unity, you know? And that's what it is. It's, it's us united together. And, um, and so maybe people should throw a dinner party. Oh, I mean, if you're oh, feeling, <laughs> I think that was the word of the Lord. <laughs> people should throw a dinner party and best. invite people. Invite yeah. people in your church. Yeah. Invite people that you haven't, um, mm. you know, that maybe you don't know very well, and invite them to your table. Hey, yeah, invite them around. And I, I actually love that um, you referenced Peter's. Um, message because the power of community mm -hmm. is actually really significant. And even from biblical perspective, like nobody is too good for community. It's yeah. actually something that we all need. Yeah. Like you referenced it, like that is, that is in our inmost being and throughout the New Testament, the thing that Jesus did consistently yeah, as he healed people right. and as he um, performed all these many miracles, he actually restored them back yes. to community yeah, because on. a lot of times the ailments that they had and the conditions that they had, that would actually ostracize them mm. as a result in Jewish, Jewish culture. Sure. So by him healing them, mm. He then would go, go back to the temple. Mm. And it would go, show, like go be a part of community again yeah. because he understood how important community was and how necessary it was for a human being. And so whether you find yourself as an introvert or an extrovert, <laughs> like we all actually need it. It's required. Yeah. It's what we need to function. And then that's the beauty of the church is where we get to come mm -hmm. and find community. And so then we get to invite people and bring people around and whatever it looks like for you, I'd encourage. So for me, it's a dinner party and that's yeah. what I love. And so I will happily put a spread on and go, everybody who wants to come, come. But for you, it might just be, I can have a chat in a foyer yeah. or yeah. I can host a Bible study yeah. or like whatever you find yourself doing it, whatever makes you comfortable, do it because it's so important and everybody needs it. Yeah. Mm. So if you're in the room today and uh, even if there's... Uh, a little bit of loneliness in you. You could be surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. It's not about how many people you got around you. If you have a bit of loneliness to you because you haven't connected, um, you haven't found those people that reflect Jesus to you and that you feel like you can grow in your reflection of who God is, um, put your hand up. Put your hand up. I mean, not physically right now, but I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, you know, call out to somebody. There's leaders in the rooms now. There's actually pastors on the chat, if you're just joining us on the chat, who would love to talk to you, who would love to get you connected to a local church in your area. Maybe you live overseas. That's okay. We've, we've got people that we love who have beautiful local churches mm. in, in all over the world. Um, you know, these guys have campuses um, in Sydney and there, there's people waiting to welcome you and to love on you and to meet you where you're at. Rach, before we finish, um, I'll pray, but I also wondered if you would pray. Yeah, um, sure. Would you pray for girls who maybe are walking through a difficult mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. and maybe feel like they don't know how to lean in yeah. to Christ and community yeah, sure. and just pray over, um, over anybody like that? Oh, I'd love to. All right, bye. Hands. 
Oh, gracious God, thank you so much that you do promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And thank you for Jesus, who is our rock and our refuge. Lord, I do pray, especially for those women out there today who are hurting, who are um, having a really hard time or who are just lonely. Please surround them with people who will love them and love on them. Uh, show them by your spirit uh, where to connect with people. And Lord, for those of us at the moment um, who have someone on our mind who may be hurting, who, uh, who the Spirit is prompting us to, to reach out to, please give us the words to say to reach out to these women. Yep. But we do pray that you'll bring them into community and that you will show them your love, uh, which is the greatest love of all. We yep. pray that for Jesus' sake. Amen. Yes, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just... Um, invite you into every heart and room today, Lord God, if there are women that do not know you personally, that do not have salvation um, and a saving knowledge of who you are, I pray you would reveal yourself to them by your Holy Spirit. I pray that uh, they would reach out and, and ask questions, that you would give them courage to, to put their hand up and say, I'm lonely or I need community or I feel, I actually feel offended or distant and I just need to work through it because God, you, you are gracious you are kind, you are welcoming, you are restoring. It's just the kind of king you are. And so I pray, Lord God, that our communities would reflect you well, that we would reflect you well uh, to other people and that you would build your church to be irresistible mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for this time and this space. And I pray that any seed planted, would, would you would water it and it would grow. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you'll come back next week. Laura, we'll yes. keep talking. We'll keep the conversation going. And um, yeah, thank you for making the effort. Thank you girls for being here. Love you. And uh, we love you so much. So we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>